morning. My name is Jessica Womack, and I am from America. I was born in Texas, so I was glad to hear that you visited Texas before. I actually grew up in Nebraska, which is in the middle of the country, and my last residence was in Florida. I remember another Floridian that was there before, so I was in Jacksonville. And that is where I studied English and linguistics, was at Jacksonville University. While studying at Jacksonville University, I actually worked at the Writing Center. And what the Writing Center is, it's a place for international students, as well as American students, to receive help on grammar, English translation, and writing their term papers. So, I worked there for two years. After working at the Writing Center, I went to a literary arts museum magazine. And what I did there was basically, you sent me your information, maybe your poetry, or your writing, your prose, and I edited it out, and then I'll send it back to you. Or I would submit it further for submission in a magazine. So I did that for a few years, and then I moved over to a publishing house. After the publishing house, I decided maybe I should try another country. While in university, I studied Mandarin, and my professor, he urged me, try Asia, go to Asia. I'm like, well, shit, no, I don't want it. I can't speak it. But I can read it, I can't speak, people laugh at me, I'm afraid, I'm a foreigner. He said, no, don't be afraid, just go. And I ended up trying out South Korea, and I've been here for 18 months. So that's a little bit about me. And during our presentation today, you will see a black page. Whenever you see a black page, that's when you can raise your hand, ask a question. You can tell me to repeat something or to go slower. So it's very interactive. It's just not me talking. You can actually say, Jessica, go back, go back. Tell me more about this, and I will definitely do that. Okay? So we're going to start off with a map of America. This is the southeast. So here's Florida, where you were. And in the southeast region, the reason why I have this map is because English, while we all speak the same English, our dialects and our dictation are very different in America. I remember you mentioned saying that they're speaking really fast. They talk too much like rappers. <laughs> That's true. Here in the southeast, we have Florida. In Florida, you have a lot of people from the northeast that come down. So, it is slower yet fast at the same time. So, hey, how you doing? Hello, same meaning. Whereas in the northeast, it's very fast and the accent's hard. Like, what you doing? Just very fast and accented. Southeast, slower, rolling. Here in the Intermountain area, Texas, where you were, and all the way over here, Arizona, Nevada, this whole area, New Mexico, you can see it's slower. We call it Southern Twain. So, hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Hello. So, it's a twang. It's still English. We understand, but it's a different momentum. From foreigners that come here, this area is the Bible Belt, where it's majority Christian. I've heard people say, they sound British, or they sound French. Louisiana, there's a lot of French influence with Creole. And here, there's also I mean, slavery and lots of immigration. There's just so many different mixtures of languages that have created the Southern Twain. The Midwest, which is where I developed my English, is known for the area without an accent. Basically, if you call a call center in America, your person's probably going to be in the Midwest. This is where people prefer to have voiceovers at. In the Midwest, we say A instead of ah. Like in the South, ah. Ah, okay. Hey, over there. Like the ah is long. But here is A. We pronounce everything immediately, like E, A. Everything's pronounced. Over here in the Pacific West, we have California, land of the sun. It's slower, and I would say that it's a mixture between the Northeast and the Southeast, yet it's still clear in the Midwest. California 
has people from all over. So it's just really a big mix there. So when you're learning English, if you ever wanted to go to America to learn, my suggestion would be the Midwest. Somewhere like Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, and Chicago. And the reason why I say that is because you'll have a clear diction. They'll speak at a medium pace, not too slow, not too fast. And if you pick up the dialect there, you can use it anywhere. Areas that would say no would be Florida, New York, Texas, and California. The reason why is because there's a large Korean population, not only Korean population, but a large immigrant population, period. And if you go there, you might speak, you know, your own language instead of English. So, that is my suggestion there. Any questions? Where is the slang? The slang. Yeah, okay. Let's go back. <laughs> this is the back era. Okay, slang. Every area has its own slang. Let's try. Okay, Northeast. Hey, get out of there. It's like very fast. Hey, get out of there. Like very fast. Um, Texas. Hey, darling, you want to come potato? <laughs> like, da 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 da. It's very roller coaster. Um, here in California, hey dude, what's happening? What's up, man? Yeah, you wanna go? Wanna catch some waves, dude? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, the Midwest is, hey everybody, my name's Jessica, I'm from Nebraska, Woo, go Huskers. It's not, like, rolling, and it's not slow, and it's not too fast. Does that answer your question for slang? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so, teaching to young people. I am here as an EPIC teacher, and EPIC is an English program in Korea. And what they do is they bring people who have either majored in education or English, they've had teaching experience, or they graduated from a four-year university. Nowadays, they usually prefer people who have teaching experience, graduated from a university with English, linguistics, or some type of language background because they tend to know more about helping other people learn English. So, when I'm teaching young people, I really like to focus on authentic language. Here is a very common scenario in Korea. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? <laughs> To an English speaker, a native speaker, when we hear that, we're like, oh, you read the book. It's not authentic. Usually people who have learned English as a second language say, I find thank you and you. <laughs> but if you're a native speaker, oh, I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm fine. It's okay. Just like in Korea, maybe say, Oh, 안녕하십니까. Uh, uh, but you can drop it. You can say, Oh, that's good. What's your name? Oh, that's good. Because you're Korean, you know that you're already talking to someone. Same in English. I'm fine, thank you, and you. <laughs> <laughs> we know the conversation is going to be short. <laughs> So authentic language, I'm good, how about you? Oh, everything's great. And not only that, but your intonation, making sure that you say, hi, thank you, I'm happy, I'm great, I'm sad, oh, I'm so tired, oh. Emotion, your face, and your tone really helps with language. In Korea, I've noticed that it's very and then it goes up slightly. It's straight up. <laughs> then English, hello, how are you? Okay, you, much up. So make sure with authentic language, your face shows it, I'm happy. Your voice, I'm happy. Okay, all together. Target sentences. I teach three year olds. So I have to be very, very short with my sentences. If I say, please, go pick up the red bag and bring it to me. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, 
They start freaking out. They get scared. Oh, teacher! But please bring me the bag. Oh, okay. Bag. Bring. I understand. Target sentences. Target. Speak what you need to say. In America, we say a lot. Oh yeah, you see the red bag over there in the corner? Yeah, over there. Yeah, please come bring it. <laughs> like, really? Just bring me the red bag. So target sentences. Importance of sight words and phonics. These is for people who really like to study and also want to have quick reading retention. Those sight word lists is 220 words that are most frequently used, like the, and, blue, white, go, we, nay. And basically, a sight word is something you don't have to read. It's memory, memorization. Hooked on phonics. I been hooked on phonics <laughs> when I was a child. Hooked on phonics, like A is for apple, a, a, apple, B is for ball, boom, boom, ball. So you'll see the song, you'll see it on the screen. So B, book, 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 okay. Ball, so you remember, oh, B, ball, spelling, sound. Phonics, I really like phonics. My students in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, we all study phonics. And I have seen them actually grow in their pronunciation and their reading level. So, the thumb phonics, to me, is the best. Adult sight word list, adults is really good. What do you mean adults? Dolch is the person who created it. So it's her name, uh -huh. her last name. Uh -huh. It's a teacher. Uh -huh. So those sight word lists, they named it after her. Okay, any questions? Uh, there is a few words. Uh, uh, when I was in, in uh, companies, okay. um, a lot of Americans say, hello, how are you? Yes. But, um, when I uh, didn't feel good, but mm -hmm. um, not bad. So uh, I answered nothing special, same old, same old. Okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of uh, uh, expressions in Americans. But yeah. um, in Koreans, uh, just uh, writing the book. I'm fine, thank you. Oh, you. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, in one way. Yeah. Oh, it's sad. Yeah, but um, uh, uh, I feel. Uh, uh, every day is uh, good, not good. Okay. Every day is uh, good. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes same old, same old, or the, um, mm, uh, nothing specially. Yeah. Yes, but uh, we need a learning uh, word expressions uh, in every situation. Oh, I definitely agree. I agree with that completely. I actually have a Korean English book. I'm trying to learn Korean. So, child uh, they say, but I'm so I'm happy. I want to say something else. So I understand what you're saying. Sometimes the books can be very limiting in the vocabulary. I will give you my contact information, and if you ever want to study on your own, I do have a book that I created for my schools. I have two adult English classes, and we have expressions <coughs> where we use our, uh, oh, so so, I'm okay, everything's fine, it's okay. So we have expressions, so you can use that. I can email it to you. Those are expressions not on the book. No, yeah. Not in the woods. Yeah. I know, so yeah. why? That's a big problem. No, very big. Because if you want to be fluent, you have to talk like us. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will definitely do that. Any other questions for this area? Okay, we'll move forward. And here is my kindergarten class, so three and four year olds. Wow. We did the wheels on the bus go round and round. So the wheels on the bus go round and round. So when I teach them, we all do the dance. And everything that is underlined is the word that they remember. So wheels, round and round. Doors, open and shut. People, up and down. 
Driver, tickets please. And the horn, beep, beep, beep. The brakes, beep, beep, beep. So they had to make a puppet, and we did the dance and the song. So that's how I teach my children. Questions? Okay. Adult learners, everyone may hear. My first suggestion would be to find a hobby or common ground. Like, for instance, American pop dance class. That will help you learn English. You can do aerobics, exercise, and have friends. What I do to learn Korean, I learn K-pop songs. And I like to K-pop dance with my friends. And it helps me learn authentic phrases because in the songs, it's not from a book. It's from what's actually being spoken. So as an adult, I would suggest finding a hobby, maybe sewing, maybe biking, or walking, hiking, and find a group and learn English with that. That way, you look forward to it. You play video games with your kid, play your video games in English when you're studying and you're playing at the same time. If you're an adult, and you like dramas, watch an American soap opera with the subtitles. That way you can understand the language and the speed and your study as well. Music, movies, and books. Eat, pray, love. In my school, we have an adult book club. And what we do is we have a study guide. We have a book. We have weekly discussions. And then we watch a movie afterwards. We watched Holes, and basically what we did was we found a book within the 6th to 7th, 8th grade reading level. And with that, our teachers, they actually learned a lot about American culture, why this sentence is this way, grammar, what does this mean, and windows. And I really think music, movies, and books are great ways to learn because you can watch the movie, you can read the book, you can speak it out loud. Language exchange. There is a language exchange group here in Gumi. It meets on Sunday and on Wednesday at the train station and Cafe Curet. I'll give you a handout with all the information, the address. It's actually a very big group. They speak English, French, Spanish, and Russian and Korean. And they meet all the time. So on Saturdays and Fridays, sometimes they go out to eat and have dinner. So you're in the perfect place because that language exchange is very healthy. Yin Chan just started a language exchange, and it'll be on Tuesdays. And it is at Cafe Daily at 6 p.m. You can feel free. They're doing Korean and English exchange, so that's definitely awesome. Daegu has a language exchange as well. It's called Friends in Korea. This organization actually meets all over Korea. They have lots of social events for all ages. So if you're looking for someone, oh, I don't want to be around people that are 20 or 30. No, I'm older. Maybe I'm 50. Maybe I'm 60. Friends in Korea is a good place because it has age-appropriate language exchange. Intense language learning which is learning abroad. But we had two people, actually, that were abroad. If you're going to be abroad, I suggest learning 30, day, 30 words a day. It seems like a lot, but if you spend six months abroad or three months abroad, you really want to learn as much vocabulary as possible. That way you can speak it and you can understand reaction. I don't know what you're saying. Then you can go home and practice it again. Okay, any questions? Yes? What do you recommend for kids? For kids. Oh, for movies? Okay. I would definitely recommend Disney movies. Yes, and Pixar. So, let's see. Your son, I think he will like Thomas the Train. T-H-O-M-S, Thomas the Train. They have books, they have the toys, and the movies. And the movies, the English is very simple. So I think that he can understand that. Uh, Tumbletubbies? Teletubbies? Teletubbies? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Seuss. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. 
Dr. Seuss, Pixar. You can look at Hooked on Phonics. You can actually order it and bring it here. And it's a huge system. So it has books, it has the DVD. Blue's Clues. Oh, Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. It's a man and a dog. And it's a kid's show. So they have songs. Blue's Clues. I got Blue's Clues. And they have dance and they have books as well. So that'd be perfect here. Welcome. Any other questions? Alright. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, if I have uh, joined this uh, cafe, yes. what kind of kitchen? We bring a dish? Yes. Oh, because I said, Gumi. Gumi, yes. If I have uh, joined this cafe, mm -hmm. what kind of kitchen? What we can oh, learn there? Aha, uh -huh. okay. okay. I'm just this talking right and then uh, I'm just another kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. At the Gumi train station, the Cafe Purette, what you can do is you can go there and basically they have different areas of so Korean, English, Spanish, French, and in that area you can conversate. So bring your learning materials, bring your dictionary, and they usually have coffee, get some cake, and they're there maybe two hours. They're kind of there. They're very long. They like to talk a lot. <laughs> If you ever want to know about the Yingchang language exchange, actually Mark is the one that is starting it. So here he comes there. So when he talks on the tenth, I'm sure he'll be able to give you so much information. About how many people are you? And Gumi? Yes. Yeah, you can say about twenty. It's a pretty big group, and they're always coming in and out. It's a very big group. Just all adults. Yeah, adults. <laughs> some are old, like 30, 40, some are young, maybe 20. But that one has a big range of age. So definitely. And one in Chan, maybe 30s, 40s? How many people? No, well, the age. age. Range. The age range is probably going to be, um, I forgot my age, but 20. I want to say the lowest we have is probably about 23. And I'm inviting my co teachers and my friends and the age range is like anywhere from 23 until like 30 or 40. It's about the same age range. So try it out. <laughs> this is my adult English class. We're having a party after our book. We're eating cake and just having a good time. This is a book that we use and this is a study guide. If you want to read holes, I can send you my English study guide to it. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me, and I can help explain whatever is necessary. I also have vocabulary notes in here. There's the vocabulary list and everything that goes along with it. So I can send that to you. Resources. Here's addresses. You should have a printout. This is the Gumi, Kinshan, Digu. The web address should be on your printout as well, so you can go to the websites. And here are resources. Maybe you don't want to talk around other people. I just want to study by myself. <laughs> Here's Pimsleur. Pimsleur is for people that learn by listening. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn by audio, Pimsleur is the best program for that. An example. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. So, what are you going to do today? Oh, I'm going to go to the cafe. Pimsleur will play the conversation. Afterwards, it will break down the conversation. It will have to repeat, and then it will translate, and then it will say, hello, hello, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So you repeat. That's how Pimsleur works. For instance, say you're going hiking or you're going jogging, Pimsleur, just plug it in. Work out. Rosetta Stone is for people who learn by seeing. So if you learn by picture and sound, Rosetta Stone is best for you. It's on a computer. And let's say there's a picture of a man here, a picture of a woman here. It'll ask you to choose the man. So you have to think. But there's no hint. So you have to use your brain and reasoning and choose one. So that's how Rosetta Stone works on a basic level. Interchange is a book. So if you learn best 
I'm looking and studying and reading. This is Interchange. It's from Cambridge. So I think reading materials from Cambridge are a very high level. This is for grammar, for speaking, for listening. I know English, but my grammar, I need help. Interchange is for you. This is my guide map. <laughs> There's my contact information up there. So if you need to get a hold of me, just jot it down. And you should also have a handout. Okay. So number one, if you want to learn how to speak English and be confident, buy a dictionary. A good dictionary. So, Oxford, Cambridge, I would go high rather than low quality. Number two, choose a language program. Do you learn by seeing, by listening, or by reading? So choose one. Number three, find a hobby or talent that you can combine with study. So if you're a runner, listen to Pimsleur while you're running. If you like music, oh, you can dance to English pop songs to Madonna. Or if you like to swim or be in the ocean, you can read. Maybe a guidebook or a scuba diving book in English. So you can learn about it and then go scuba diving. Number four, start practicing with authentic material. Listen to music, Michael Jackson. Watch a movie, I love you. <laughs> Read a book, Beauty and the Beast. So find something that's actually from that country and use it. Okay, number five, once you've done all four, Join a language exchange group. This is going to be important because you need English friends. People that you can talk to, that can correct you and help you, and also push you to go further. So, just think to yourself when you're looking at this paper, where am I? Am I at a one, two, three, four, or five? And then go according to that. Okay? So I'm going to open it up to questions. Anything that wasn't addressed earlier, I can definitely answer it now. Any questions at all? Yeah, my question is, is the pronunciation like, like us, like I said, American, is really important for learning? I think it's important for learning, but if you don't have it, don't be afraid or be ashamed about it. Because we understand that you're a foreigner, and if you're trying, we understand you. We're gonna work with you. But pronunciation is good because if you're talking and you're listening, I don't know what's going on. And sometimes it can be a little difficult or frustrating if your pronunciation is not right. Like for instance, P and B and D and D. It's really hard sometimes. Like boy, dog, the d, d, and the d, b, b. The v and the f, 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 like fishy, fishy. Yeah. Like, what? No. <laughs> huh? Like, someone asked, like, oh, teacher, PC, PC. Like, PC ball? Like, no, pissy, pissy, I'm like, oh, fish, okay, I understand. So, I would say phonics yeah. for learning pronunciation. Exactly. Don't cite work as if you have good pronunciation. If you think you need to work on it, get a hooked on phonics program. They do have adult learner programs for phonics, and you can get it on YouTube for free as well. Well, we are Filipinos, and we have this way, way different pronunciation. Oh yeah, I know it's Americans, yeah. So, just like when we teach, we have like, we need American English, which we are not, it's really beyond us, you know? So it's kind of frustrating. Well, it's, how would you say about that? One of my best friends here, she's Filipino, she's actually a missionary in Ginchon. Uh -huh. So, we do pronounce things differently. Sometimes people will ask us to pronounce something. They don't listen to her. They don't listen to me. Like, hmm, it's different. <laughs> Someone is wrong here. Someone. Stop me. <laughs> so, with that instance, I would just say be open to it. There's lots of other English speakers with accents. For instance, if you're from England or Ireland, South Africa, Australia, or India, and you're speaking English, it's different.